So before we get into um, a little discussion of ground fault circuit interrupters, I really wanted to, um, I guess, step back and I clicked through on this residential code because this is, takes us to the New York State uh, 2015 electrical, um, electrical code for residential construction. And um, it's got a, a lot of wonderful explanations, wonderful if you're into that technical geeky kind of thing about the placements of outlets. These are where I pull these graphics from. Um, describe certain conditions that you get into. In this case, we're looking at kitchens. Um, talks about bathrooms, the requirements for fixtures and placements, outdoor outlets, laundry areas. So it has the full, full gamut of the requirements that you um, would need to be aware of when you are detailing the electrical component of your project. So let's step back now and just take a, a little deeper look into this idea of ground fault circuit interrupters. They become really important when we talk about these key areas, um, the kitchens, the bathrooms, and the laundry areas. Well, because we're dealing with water, um, the reason for the, um, the issue when we're dealing with water is uh, water is a very good con conductor of electricity and appliances um, that are exposed to water can um, leak electrical voltage and result in electrocution or other shock or just electrical shocks um, and they can be very serious they can be fatal so um, we've made um, important strides in the code to try and protect these um, especially um, important locations so uh, kitchens like i said around sinks bathtubs shower stalls laundry areas um, the dishwasher branch circuit is required so I wanted to just take a minute so you understand this idea of, of how a ground fault circuit interrupter works. Um, it's uh, inside relatively technically complicated, but the concept is, is fairly simple. Um, the idea is, is that the electronics inside of this device is constantly measuring the difference between the voltage on the hot line going in to speak and the neutral line coming back so when an appliance is powered up if there's any current that isn't coming back on one of these legs but could be even coming back on the ground leg but it won't be coming back on one of these legs this device trips like a circuit breaker or a switch and ends current flow to the device it's assuming that that lost current is going to what's called a ground fault so this appliance has gotten wet, has a break in the wiring, and now there's a path for electricity to flow that isn't what was designed in the appliance. And typically the safety issue is that unintended flow of electricity is through a person and the potential for hazard is electrocution. So this is kind of the, the inside idea of what's going on in these devices. It's important to note uh, that you only need one ground fault circuit interrupter per um, protected um, series of outlets. So in a kitchen, you can have, if you need two branch circuits, two 20 amp circuits, you would only need two ground fault circuit interrupters. And then it's the first one in the line, and then every one that comes off of that branch circuit can be a standard outlet. This ground fault circuit interrupter will protect any outlet um, down downstream of the supply. This is a uh, an electrical diagram, um, a little probably a little more um, graphic than you would see in a technical drawing, but it really describes a lot of the issues in some of the basic nomenclature for describing a, an electrical arrangement in a in a small home, so to speak. So we have um, the symbol for the electrical outlet. The S is a symbol for a switch. Um, these circles can mean many things, but it's uh, um, this would be a, um, an outlet box or what could be a ceiling fan or a room light. So it's, it is indicating that the switch is controlling this light in the room. It's important that um, for code that we have a light switch to turn a light on when we enter a room. Up here we have an outside outlet and it's one of the conditions that needs to be protected with a ground fault circuit interrupter. Here we have a switch controlling an outside light. 
Um, in the bathroom, we have special conditions. So here we have a ground fault circuit interrupter for the outlet on the sink. And we have multiple switches here. One switch controlling the light over the sink, another switch controlling the fan and lighting ventilating system here. And in this case, we have a three-way switch um, in this hallway, so we can turn a light on on this end of the hallway or on this end of the hallway. And it looks like we're indicating a three-way switch going off to some other area here. So this would be um, a relatively simplified kind of uh, first uh, first year project in, in making an electrical diagram. Okay, a couple more things and we'll close off this section on electrical systems. Um, smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors are required, um, I guess, throughout the, throughout the world now, at least in the national international codes and in the uh, U.S. codes. Um, so we have um, uh, requirements that are, are we'll probably all understand in bedrooms, in hallways leading to bedrooms, on each level. Um, there are special conditions where locations may be um, ambiguous and they're typically spelled out in the codes. So um, you can find a wealth of information if you're coming up with this idea of half levels and um, areas that you are not sure need protection with smoke detectors. Uh, many devices are hardwired in. I think they're required mostly by code now. You'll still find battery-operated ones. Uh, most ones that are hand-wired are hardwired. Hardwired means they're connected to the, um, the electrical supply of the house. They have inside of them a battery backup for power outages. And so there's still a, um, a battery that sometimes needs replacement. Uh, but I think that's kind of going away now. And then in recent years, us, uh, besides smoke detectors, the idea of carbon monoxide detectors. Carbon monoxide detectors are uh, detecting uh, problems with our natural gas fuel devices, or it could be a gasoline generator uh, operating uh, improperly in a garage, creating carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is produced when appliances are star starved of oxygen in their combustion air. So the appliance is failing and creating a poisonous gas. Carbon monoxide is a, um, if you don't know it, it's a very serious um, um, breathable uh, poisonous gas. It binds with our hemoglobin. It makes it impossible for oxygen to bind. So we actually suffocate or we, uh, I don't know what the term would be for it. Um, so um, the safety device for that is detectors that can detect this carbon monoxide. Um, I think the code's probably very flexible or as it, as it starts to develop on these devices. Um, new technology is coming along every time, but at, at, a, at a basic um, a one on each level. Um, and it says only required with carbon monoxide producing appliances, but that may not be. I'm, I'm taking uh, verbiage here from previous um, presentation. And I would caution you to review um, your code, your specific code, while you're designing your project um, to find out if that is, in fact, the case. And then the last thing I wanted to touch on um, is this idea of backup generators. We started this whole section on electricity looking at the grid system and the idea of supplying power to our homes. And we know now with California a couple of years ago with uh, um, their fires, um, um, causing the um, power systems to shut down to protect the grid. Um, many people were without power. The idea is now a backup power, um, much more in the minds of homeowners and businesses. So on the top here, we have what is a uh, most likely a natural gas supplied backup generator. Um, the idea here is that once a power fails in the house, it automatically interrupts that supply from the pole and the backup generator starts and starts supplying power to the home. And so these are um, relatively large investments for two to $5,000. Um, but these would be things that homeowners would see as an amenity. And um, this was just the, the idea is this is a motor inside here, a, um, a gasoline motor generating electricity through a generator. And the other device we need to be aware of is an electrical motor. And I, I'm only discussing these because 
I would think that we all would understand these, but these are kind of required terminology that um, we need to cover. So I have an illustration of an electrical motor that generate takes electrical energy and converts it to um, mechanical motion. You'll see electrical motors in air conditioners and fans, in refrigeration systems. So they're um, ubiquitous in our built environment. So that wraps things up. Let's, um, I look forward to um, the lab for you.